1988, George H.W. Bush became President of the United States. What did George Bush do before he was President? How did he rise to the highest office in the land? George Herbert Walker Bush was born on June 12, 1924, in Milton, Massachusetts, but he lived most of his young life in Greenwich, Connecticut. In 1936, he enrolled at the Phillips Academy in Andover, Massachusetts. In high school, he played baseball and soccer, served in the student government, and wrote for the school newspaper. He enlisted in the U.S. Navy and became a naval aviator. He served in the Navy throughout most of World War II, taking part in the Pacific Theater of Operations. In September of 1945, he was honorably discharged. In January of 1945, George married Barbara Pierce. The couple would eventually have six children together. George and Barbara Bush would remain married throughout the rest of their lives. Following his discharge from the Navy, Bush enrolled at Yale University. While at Yale, he played baseball and participated in the College World Series in 1947 and 1948. He finished college in only two and a half years, graduating with a degree in economics. After graduating from college, he moved to Texas, where he became involved in the oil industry. In 1954, he was named the president of the Zapata Offshore Company, a business which he had also helped establish. He remained in this position until 1964. In 1964, Bush was the chairman of the Republican Party for Harris County, Texas. He attempted to run for the United States Senate, but was defeated by the incumbent Senator, Ralph W. Yarborough. Two years later, in 1966, Bush was elected to the House of Representatives. He was re-elected to this position in 1968. In 1970, Bush once again campaigned for a seat in the U.S. Senate, but he was once again defeated by Yarborough. In 1971, Richard Nixon appointed Bush to serve as the ambassador to the United Nations. He served in this role for two years until he became the chairman of the Republican National Committee. Bush also worked as the chief of the U.S. Liaison Office in the People's Republic of China during the presidency of Gerald Ford. In 1976, Bush was asked to be the director of Central Intelligence a position he held throughout the final year of Ford's presidency. In 1980, Bush competed in the Republican primaries. He was a strong contender early on, but dropped out of the race as Ronald Reagan emerged as the frontrunner. After Reagan won the nomination, he selected Bush as his vice presidential running mate. When Reagan was elected to the presidency, George H.W. Bush became the 43rd Vice President of the United States. Bush served as Reagan's Vice President for eight years before running for President again in 1988. He easily secured the Republican nomination and chose Dan Quayle, a Senator from Indiana, as his Vice Presidential running mate. When Bush accepted the nomination at the Republican National Convention, he delivered his signature speech, which is remembered today as the Thousand Points of Light speech. In this address, Bush encouraged Americans to become more involved and volunteer their time and efforts with clubs and organizations. These volunteers, he said, would spread like stars, like a thousand points of light in a broad and peaceful sky. This same speech also included Bush's famous promise to the American people when he pledged, Read my lips. No new taxes. Bush faced Michael Dukakis, the governor of Massachusetts, in the general election. While the election was hotly contested, 
it was ultimately not a close race. Bush won 41 states, securing 426 electoral votes to Dukakis's 111. When he was sworn into office on January 20, 1989, George H.W. Bush became the 41st President of the United States. During Bush's presidency, there were several notable accomplishments. Bush negotiated with the Premier of the Soviet Union, Mikhail Gorbachev, to reduce the number of nuclear missiles that each country possessed. This treaty, known as the Strategic Arms Reduction Treaty, or START, was signed on July 31st of 1991. Bush also negotiated the North American Free Trade Agreement, NAFTA, which was an agreement to eliminate trade barriers between the United States, Mexico, and Canada. The United States also fought the Persian Gulf War during Bush's administration. The results of this conflict were seen as highly favorable by the American public, and at its conclusion, 82% of the American people approved of George Bush's performance as president. As the 1992 presidential election approached, a Bush victory seemed almost inevitable. However, an economic recession in 1992 hurt his popularity immensely. Additionally, early in his presidency, Bush had been forced to raise taxes and abandon his 1988 promise of no new taxes. These issues, coupled with the rise of a very popular Democrat, Bill Clinton, led to Bush's defeat in 1992. Bush won only 38% of the popular vote and became the first elected Republican president to lose his re-election bid since 1932. George H.W. Bush has been honored in many ways. The George Bush Presidential Library was dedicated in 1997 at Texas A&M University. In 2009, the United States Navy commissioned an aircraft carrier named the USS George H.W. Bush. In 2011, President Barack Obama awarded Bush the Presidential Medal of Freedom, the highest civilian honor in the United States. Bush was also given the Profile and Courage Award by the John F. Kennedy Library Foundation in 2014. He was even knighted by Queen Elizabeth II, becoming only the third U.S. president to receive this honor. In the years since he left office, public opinion of George Bush has improved. In the month before the 1992 election, only 34% of the American public Proved of President Bush's job performance. However, 16 years later, in 2008, 60% of Americans felt that George H.W. Bush had been a good president.